Okay, Best Buy just delivered our new Samsung gas slide-in range. Okay, here's our part number. So, um, all of these gas ranges ship from the factory set up for natural gas. While we out here in the country, we have LP or liquid propane, so it needs to be converted before we start. So, to convert this, there's a handful of things we need to do. Uh, first and foremost, it comes with different orifices. Um, so these orifices are the ones that get swapped out for the ones that are already pre-installed, which are for natural gas. Um, and actually what you'll notice is the corresponding uh, orifices on uh, the existing ones for natural gas are much larger than the ones for LP. So it is dangerous to run uh, this setup for natural gas on an LP system. The flame would be just much too great. So there's a two-step process. One, change out all the range top orifices as well as there's uh, two inside the oven, one for broil, one for bake. And then there's also uh, underneath the range is a regulator which needs to be switched as well. So all of these Samsung gas ranges will always ship with a conversion kit. Um, here's a, a picture of the conversion kit. It comes on a little card with all the various orifices and it's laid out um, the same way as the cooktop is. So you can see where it's labeled left rear, right rear, and they're physically located in those spots. Here's your, your center burner. You can see it's, it's right there. And actually on the right front burner here, there are actually three different orifices. Uh, the Lord center one and two in the rear, and that's why we have three of them on there. And there is your bake, and that's your broil. So really the only tools you need on uh, something like this is a seven millimeter socket wrench. All right, we're gonna begin by changing out the orifices on the top burners. I'll just put a piece of cardboard here to protect stuff. It's just a seven millimeter socket drive, uh, or as they say, you can use either seven millimeter or a nine thirty second nut driver. All right, they shouldn't be super tight, so we're just going to do one at a time. Just going to kind of break it free. I'm going to use this by hand to remove it. Okay, there's our old orifice, and we're going to replace it, since we're starting with the left rear, with this one. If you see them side by side, let's see if we can get the focus, one orifice is significantly bigger. So the one for the LP, the comparable one is much smaller in diameter. So what I'm going to do is... After I remove the one I'm going to use, I'm going to take the old one, which was for natural gas, I'm going to put it back in there and just put it in reverse so I know which one is which. Let's go ahead and put this on. Again, not very tight at all. Actually, I'm not even going to use a socket on it. I'm just going to snug it up. Just as easy as that. Let's do left front. This little tight, just again, break it free. It's basically just rinse and repeat for all the top burners.
you get a needle nose pliers to get that out of there because it dropped in. Okay, a pair of needle nose pliers to retrieve that orifice that didn't quite go in. Started. Finish it up. All right. Let's proceed with the right front. As we said earlier, the right front. There's actually three orifices. There's actually three burners in there. Uh, and how would you really know? which one is which, because if you just look at them casually, you really can't tell um, which is which. However, the camera won't be able to pick it up, but each one of these does have a marking on it, uh, and two of them say 074, and the last one says 046. So, I mean, I could just simply take a guess that since the two are the same, the 074, that the two would go in the back, and the 046, the oddball one, would go in the center, but just to, just to be sure, the, um, the installation conversion kit manual here shows that the right front contains out two pieces of a .74 and a .46. So the 7.4s go in the back, uh, the 4.6 go up front. So let's just do one at a time to the center, the easier one. in there. I said there is etching on there but it's very difficult to see. So again, the last two are the 074s. They're a pair. I'm going to take them both out since they're the same. I'm not going to get them mixed up because they're identical. So obviously you really can't get in there with the nut driver or the socket. So I have a little 7 millimeter wrench. Should make life easier. Let's see. Yes, it does. A little bit of a challenge to get your fingers in there, especially when you have big fingers. It doesn't help. Take it, put it in the right spot. Might as well do them both at the same time. Now notice I'm doing all this with the protective plastic on there. No sense risk scratching up the unit while I'm converting it and installing it. As much as we all love to rip that plastic off, I'm going to leave it on. Let's see, this might be a bit of a challenge. Now I can put this in here and start it. Kind of like so. Finish them up by hand and then with this little wrench.
snug it up, not too tight. No need to gorilla that on, it's not going anywhere. Conversion for the top of the range, which is on this particular uh, unit is seven orifices. Okay, next step is we're going to change out um, that part on the pressure regulator. So to access that, you need to take the warming draw out. Notice I still have this on the cardboard in the original packaging, uh, just to keep it uh, intact and not scratch. So there's a little lever that you lift up to unlatch it. So I'm going to put the camera down and unlatch this and take this out. Okay, two hands. You lift these little call them levers or lever up. It should release it. Feels like that one's released. This one is not. All right, well, here's where it helps to actually read the directions. Um, so just struggling with the drawer, couldn't take it out. That's because the right side's draw, the clip has to go up. The left draw, clip has to go down. Let's try that again. Up on the right, down on the left. Try that again. And hey, how about that? Warming draw is out. Okay, here's a close-up of underneath um, the stove with the warming draw out. So, kind of a good shot of all the, the different things. And if you can see in the back there, that's the pressure regulator. It has the red cap on it. So the idea is there's a brass fitting that that red cap covers. We're going to take that cap off, uh, unscrew it, and then once I get that out, I will show you what we do with it. We really just have to invert it and put it back. All right, so just using a simple open-end adjustable wrench, I was able to take this out. This is kind of what it looks like. Let me see if I can get a focus on this. So the instruction manual calls this actually a dual-purpose orifice. Really what you're meant to do is take this, and you can see the two sides, are it's asymmetric. Focus. So this is the part, the part with the little protrusion on it, is the part that has to go down now for the LP installation. Well, when it came for natural gas, that little protrusion was up and it was capped. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it down so that protrusion faces down. We're going to put this back on it. We're going to screw it in and then cap it off. Okay. The dual purpose uh, orifice has been reinstalled and I'll try and zoom in so you can see which side should be open. Right, that part with a little protrusion should be pointed down on the pressure regulator. Um, I reinstalled the cap and I'm just going to push that down to cover the exposed threads. So the pressure regulator has been completed. In order to place the bake and the broil orifices, um, it's much easier to do the whole process with the door off. So if we open this door, open it all the way, you'll see there's some you know, like little levers almost. Kind of grab them and pull them in the down position. go push it down like so so it's released same thing for the other side okay now that those two levers have been brought to the down position you bring this or up 
about five degrees or so, and pull it right out. And I'm going to go put this in a safe place. Once the door is removed, take all your racks out. So here's the inside of the oven with the racks removed and the door removed. So uh, what we need to do is take out that uh, back screw there. There's four screws up on top and we're starting again with the broiler. One, two on the left, two on the right, and then we'll take the broiler off. Let me set this up and show you how to do it. Phillips head screwdriver because the orifice is attached to this here. Again, this is the broil orifice that we're changing. I'm going to keep my screws down here, bend them in there, I don't lose them. Here to be the same style screw so you can't really mix them up. Glad I did this here in the hallway on the carpeting as opposed to in the kitchen on the tile. Careful, the igniter there. Not going to disconnect, I'm just going to settle it up. Hopefully, it won't fall on me. Okay. Let's zoom in. There is the broiler orifice, right there we need to get to. Just crack it. Okay, here's our card. They did a good graphical representation showing the bake, the black line on the bottom. The broil, the black line on top, that's what we want, the broil. I'm not going to throw the ratchet on there to tighten it, I don't want to over tighten it. Just going to put a little 7 millimeter wrench on here and snug it up. Like we did before, store these so we know what's going 
It's only got one left, which is the bake. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this broiler burner back on. Uh, just the same way you saw it come off, just goes back on in reverse. Okay, so your top broiler assembly is back together. Now we gotta get to the bake burner in the orifice. Here's some light. So here's the bottom tray. There's actually two screws in the back, two Phillips head screws that I already removed. I'm gonna put this down and take this out. This right out. Get some light in here. So there's your bake assembly. You can see there's looks like there's four screws and a screw that holds the bracket on the backs. Okay, so to remove the bake tray, there was really just two front screws and little clips on the back. Uh, and then there's one screw on the bracket here and one on the burner there. So and this should just come right off. And then the rest we're going to do from underneath where the warming draw is. So here we are underneath the unit again. Um, you can see that the burner has been removed. And let me zoom in. So you can see that little brass orifice up on top there. That's what we need to replace. That's the bake orifice. Okay, well that uh, bake burner has been uh, converted underneath there. I put the burner assembly back, put the bottom tray back on, and we're good to go. Next step is to install the stove, get the gas hooked up, uh, and potentially adjust those uh, burner shutters, you know, by checking the flame, make sure the flame looks good. Uh, we'll do that a little bit later, but signing off for now, get this sucker installed.